In this video, I'm about to go through a two week rapid fat loss mini cut using methods from an unpublished research paper out of USF. I'm gonna explain who should and shouldn't go through something like this, why I'm gonna do it, go over the methods used in the research, the results from the study, and how I'm gonna go about things based on that. Okay, first, who is something like this for? I can tell you who it's not for. This is not for someone who has a long history of dieting, stream dieting, people going through a reverse diet trying to fix their metabolism. If you have any concerns about your dieting history and your metabolism this is not for you because what this will likely do is cause your body to panic again and start guarding against starvation and what it can do is literally undo all the progress you've made in your reverse and then you've got to start over who it can be for is someone who is going through a long building phase or maintenance phase has no intentions of dieting for a long time but your body fat starting to creep up a little bit more than you're comfortable with getting outside of your normal kind of weight maintenance range and you just want to tie things up a little bit knowing that you're not going to be dieting for a long time again after so understand a mini cut is like a two to four week short aggressive cut. I oftentimes hear I'm gonna do a 12 or 16 week mini cut. That is not a mini cut. These are short and sweet in and out. So that brings me to why I'm doing this. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you may realize that I actually kind of lied to you. And for me personally now, I am vowing I will not diet again until at least some point in 2025. So why am I doing this now? Well, I'd say for the last maybe about three months, I've really let things slide. Now, some things have happened. I got sick twice. One of them really sick where I basically couldn't even lift at all for almost a month. But I also just really got relaxed with things. I enjoyed the holidays way too much, was overindulging quite a bit, too much alcohol. And I was just kind of really struggling in general, just in a lot of different areas. And that certainly carried over into what I was doing here. And while I don't really like to talk about that, it doesn't make me feel good. I also want you to see that even fitness professionals who do this for a living and for the most part really love this process, still struggle sometimes and have setbacks. So it's normal and don't feel bad, but we always got to stop and go, okay, let's write the ship. And that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm not trying to fix everything I've done. I'm not trying to make up for it, so to speak. It probably sounds that way. But one, I had never done a mini cut before. And I I was really kind of interested in trying this out but also I do want to get more serious here I've gotten away from even like the recomp video that I did a while back which I'll probably hand off to that at the end of this if you haven't seen it but what I really want to do is just get my starting body fat level a little bit lower and then recommit and then go through the rest of the year in a nice building phase and then possibly in 2025 going through a big cut and trying to get down really shredded again something I haven't done since 2019 and hopefully display some extra muscle also understand while I am technically going through a cut here we're talking about two weeks out of about a year and three quarters so it's not like I'm in any danger here of over dieting or anything like that but anyway let's go over the study design so a while back I noticed that Dr. Bill Campbell who was my professor at USF when I did my science of weight management course he'd posted on Instagram about a study that was under review where they went through a two-week rapid fat loss protocol so what I did was I reached out to him to see hey could I get the methods used in this and maybe do some sort of video where I can talk about the results from the study what they did in it and then take it to myself see if I get some similar results. And he said, yeah, absolutely no problem. And he sent me the unpublished research, but with the stipulation, I cannot share that paper. So you're gonna have to take my word for it here. I'll see if maybe I can put up like little screen captures of some of the charts and stuff, but I don't even know if I can do that. But regardless, the main reason for the study was to see if, hey, if you do a short aggressive cut, keeping resistance training up and protein up, since it's such a short period of time, will you be able to reduce body fat while preserving fat free mass, as well as find out will resting energy expenditure take a bigger hit or since it's only two weeks will you not see much of a drop so to kick off the study what they had the participants do is they went through a two-week period to try to figure out their maintenance calories and they basically used the exact method that I recommend in all my videos basically eat the same track it see what it looks like take an average of your calories and this was done with self-reported food logs and what they did is they split this up into two different groups both groups ate in about a 37.5 percent calorie deficit but one group which had 20 people 15 of them were women ate 37.5 for both weeks one and week two. And the other group, which had 13 people, nine of them women, ate at a 50% calorie deficit for week one and a 25% calorie deficit for week two, still averaging 37.5 for the duration of the two weeks. What they did is they had them eat one gram per pound of body weight and not lean body mass, but total body weight. And then for the rest of the calories, 60% of them went to carbs and 40% of them went to fat. And they also told them to keep their exercise the same. So it's the same amount of training and cardiovascular activity. Then after the two week 
diet period was done, they had another two week period where they basically just said free will, do whatever you want. And I was actually kind of surprised by this because I figured people would probably gain a bunch of weight back and kind of feel restricted and go off the deep end, but it actually didn't happen. In fact, on average, their calories remained about 11% reduced from what their maintenance calories were before the study started. So the body weight itself was reduced by about 1.53 kilograms. And in the post diet follow up period, they actually gained 0.79 kilograms back. And it may sound like, oh no, they gained a bunch of weight back. But my thought was it was probably more they lost body fat and body water, glycogen, things like that, and then gained some of that glycogen and water back in that follow up period, which if you look at the results from body fat and fat free mass, that probably makes sense. Body fat was reduced by about 1.13% during the two week diet phase and was actually slightly lower in the two week post diet phase coming down to 1.19% and fat free mass was reduced by 0.51 kilograms during the diet period but returned to baseline in the two week post diet period. So remember fat free mass is muscle, yes, but it's everything in your body that's not fat, bone, skin, hair, organs, water, everything. So since their carbs were significantly reduced, they lost glycogen and water from their body during the diet period. And then it got replenished in the post diet period, leaving them with the same amount of fat free mass, but reduced body fat. So none of that was terribly surprising to me. I guess really the most surprising part to me was that they didn't lose a bit more body fat. But the part that I was really curious about the most was any reductions in resting energy expenditure. Is your metabolism going to take more of a hit in such a short period of time with pretty dramatic methods? And there actually was a decrease in REE as it reduced by about 85 calories during the diet phase, but it did increase in the post diet phase, but still about 45 calories below the baseline before the diet started. Now, of course, anytime you lose weight, your resting energy expenditure is going to come down because you now have less body mass. So you have to look more at percentages. So remember they lost about 1.2% of their body weight. And if you look at the percentage of decline in REE, it was reduced by 5.2% in the diet phase and then did increase some in the post diet phase, but still below the pre diet numbers by about 2.8%. So there was a bigger decrease in resting energy expenditure compared to the decrease in body weight. But if you think about it, it wasn't that significant. We're talking about 1 point something percent, We're talking about 45 calories. That's not a whole lot. And then I also think, okay, you got to factor in, go through a nice reverse diet afterwards. My thought is you can probably get it right back similar to baseline without any major concerns. And it wouldn't take very long since it was such a short period of time. One other quick note I wanted to make, they did have some scores for things like hunger. It did appear hunger was slightly worse in the group that did the 50% one week and 25% one week versus the 37.5% decrease two weeks in a row. And it did mention in the paper, these results were not similar to results in other studies that did similar things, most likely because other studies didn't keep resistance training and protein up. So as you've heard me say a zillion times now, to preserve your muscle in a dieting phase, you need to make sure you're training hard and eating plenty of protein. So with all that, I want to talk about what I'm going to do for my own little experience. And keep in mind, they have all the tools at the labs to be able to do things like get resting energy expenditure and determine what was fat free mass and what wasn't things like that. I don't have that, right? I just have a scale. I'll take measurements and pictures and things like that. But as of the recording of this video, I'm actually starting the process to tomorrow, I'm going to do the 37 and a half two weeks in a row rather than the 50 and 25. That just sounds horrible to me. So what that's going to mean for me, and I don't usually like to talk about calories. I haven't really done it much in a long time. And the reason is because so many people will hear my calories or somebody else's calories and they immediately want to compare it to themselves. You don't want to do that. I mean, we could literally be exact same height, weight, age, everything. And we could have a 500 calorie difference in our maintenance calories. Genetics matter. So I don't have to do the two week period. I know what my maintenance calories are. I have it at about 2,850 calories. So by going into a 37.5% deficit, that's going to bring my calories down to 1,780 calories. And for a little context on that, back in 2019, Paul Revelle helped me do a show. I got absolutely shredded, the leanest I've been and probably ever will be in my entire life. And by the very end of that, my calories were in the 1900s. So this is actually about 200 calories less than the end of that cut to start. To be fair, I was on much more activity at that time. I was doing like five hours of cardio through incline walking as well as some stationary bike. I was also going for hour long walks almost every single day on top of that. So I was doing a lot of activity, but the point is it's clearly a very aggressive start to a diet. Now I don't believe the research used high and low days and I'm not going to either. I probably could as I'm really a big believer in it. It doesn't really matter as long as your average calories are the same, but I really have no desire to drop my 1780 calories any lower than it is now eat a bit more on any other day of the week. I also am finishing up a deload here this week. I normally wouldn't worry about making sure I'm deloaded going into a cutting phase, but I just figured with it being so short and so aggressive, I didn't want to go into this 
feeling fatigued from my training, so I actually cut my block a little bit short and got good and recovered so I could feel better for the cut. So I was planning on making this all one long video and doing everything, but I'm realizing that this intro was already long, so I think I'm gonna break it up into more of like a series. So I'm gonna do this video to kick off the series, do another video doing a follow-up after two weeks to talk about the diet phase, and then I'll do another video for the post-diet phase, and maybe I'll do another one maybe like a month or so after, we'll just kind of see. But anyways, I did mention earlier that I saw some really nice body recomp, even as an experienced lifter last year. But if you want to know what I did to create that recomp and how you can start getting better results, then make sure you check out this top video. And I look forward to the rest of the series and I'll see you in that other video.